They don't get it. They just do not get it. 22 years ago, Eminem, he sent a stern warning to the WNBA, and at the time, he didn't even realize that he was warning them. In the hook of the song Lose Yourself, which most people mistakenly claim is the best song that Eminem ever made, I was never a big fan of Eminem. I was never a stan, but Lose Yourself. It's not even the best song on the 8 Mile soundtrack. Best song from that movie and the most underrated song in Eminem's entire catalog is 8 Mile Road. But anyway, in the song Lose Yourself, Eminem sent a stern warning to the WNBA by saying, You only get one shot. Do not miss your chance to blow. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. The dump has one chance to get this right. This season will be their only opportunity. And to be honest with you, they might not even have the luxury of a full season. Casual fans, they could only give them one month, one week, maybe even one night. All the WNBA has to do, get the hell out of the way. Just get out of the way and let Caitlin Clark do something that this league hasn't done in two decades. Draw and entertain an audience. But for some reason, and maybe it's because they are owned and controlled by the NBA, another league that can't get the hell out of its own way, for some reason, Dump divers in the WNBA, they seem to be heavily focused on destroying something that hasn't even been built. <laughs> Before we get started though, happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. A very happy Mother's Day to the best mom, my own mom. Now in my 39 years, I have never called her mom. When we were getting along when I was growing up, I called her Moose. I have no idea why my adolescent mind came up with that nickname for, but somehow it stuck and now her own grandkids call her Moose. Now, when we weren't getting along when I was growing up, I would call her Mother because I knew it pissed her off to be called Mother. But anyway, happy Mother's Day to all the moms. I hope you enjoy your day. A couple of days ago, I had one of my longtime viewers reach out to me asking why the topics on the channel have been so heavily focused on the WNBA recently. It was a fair question, and it's not all that unusual. It tends to happen throughout the year. During late summer and fall last year, it seemed like we were constantly talking about the inspiration of prepubescent boys, Megan Rapino and her never-ending retirement tour. When the NBA was consuming a double dose of the woke wiener, it felt like we were talking about them almost on a daily basis. Back in January, it was nonstop coverage of Pat McAfee. I go where the news cycle takes me, and right now, it seems like the entirety of the mainstream media is focused on the WNBA. I cannot believe, I'm about to say this, but in terms of mainstream attention, there seems to be more interest in the WNBA than the NBA playoffs. Now, I think the second round of the NBA playoffs have been great. Kyrie Irving, he put on an absolute masterclass yesterday afternoon. But for some reason, the NBA... <sighs> They're just not having anywhere close to the same level of impact that the WNBA is having. And I shouldn't even say the WNBA. Most people could not give a shit less about the other 143 trash collectors in the dump. The NBA playoffs, they're not having the same impact that Caitlin Clark is having in the mainstream. Kyle Hightower, he is a sports writer for the Associated Woke, formerly known as the Associated Press. Supposedly, Kyle is responsible for covering major teams in Boston. Celtics, the Bruins, the Patriots. Well, KC, what about the Red Sox? What about them? I said, major teams. No one cares about Major League Baseball. But even though Kylie is a beat writer for Boston Sports, he decided to publish an article this morning that furthers a false narrative that could destroy the momentum building in the WNBA. Headline at the Associated Press, Caitlin Clark is the focus of talks about race and double standards in sports. Um, where? Where are these talks? I don't hear normal people talking about this. 
The only ones pushing this false narrative are the shit fucks in the mainstream media. A couple of weeks ago, Nike, they received a lot of backlash and fake outrage for signing Caitlin Clark to a $28 million endorsement deal. This is outrageous! This is unfair! How can Nike give this money to a rookie? The only players receiving endorsement deals in the WNBA are the white players! Black women continue being overlooked! Oh! Companies don't give millions of dollars to athletes based on their skin color. There was a similar level of fake outrage in the mid-80s when Nike broke the bank for another rookie, Michael Jordan. Companies give millions of dollars to athletes who people recognize, athletes with influence. Obviously, Nike's not about to hand millions to the vast majority of the players in the WNBA because no one knows who they are. If a milk brand gave endorsement money to a WNBA player and their face was on the side of a milk carton, most people would think they're a missing person. Yesterday morning, Nike, they announced their latest shoe deal in the dump. Nike gave an undisclosed amount of money to Asia Wilson. Well, KC, who in the hell is Asia Wilson? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that question was trending yesterday on social media. Now, the mainstream media, they describe Aja Wilson as an accomplished WNBA player who possesses elite athleticism. Aja Wilson is the only player in the WNBA who can dunk the basketball with the assistance of a 10-foot ladder. As an employee of the Vegas Dump, the team known as the Las Vegas Anonymous Faces, Aja Wilson, she's a two-time winner of the Golden Toilet. She was even named MVP of the WNBA Finals, which comes with extra benefits during the offseason, like free tickets to watch the high school team that plays in the same gym as the Anonymous Faces so she can watch what actual basketball looks like. But instead of the associated woke celebrating the fact that Aja Wilson landed an endorsement deal with Nike, they decided to focus on comments that she made recently about Caitlin Clark. Once again, instead of her colleagues rallying around her, instead of her colleagues building her up, WNBA players, they seem to be intent on making it all about race. Dump divers, they are failing to understand this simple concept. If Caitlin Clark wins, you all win. If Caitlin Clark sells out arenas, if she boosts television ratings, the WNBA, they have the opportunity to achieve the impossible, which is finally generating pesos and profit. If that happens, the value of television deals increases, ticket prices increase, which means the salary cap will increase, and WNBA players, they will finally be able to lift themselves out of poverty. The one thing that could derail this momentum is turning this into a division of race. And that is exactly what WNBA players and their pretend friends in the mainstream media seem to be doing. Here is what Aja Wilson said about Caitlin Clark receiving mainstream attention and endorsement deals. It's a double standard. People say it's not about race, but to me it is. They don't see black women as marketable. It doesn't matter how hard I work, I still won't be recognized. Keep in mind, Aja Wilson, she made these remarks knowing that she was getting a deal from Nike. She claims that corporate America views black women as unmarketable when the largest shoe company in the world gave her a marketing deal. The Associated Press, they claim that the WNBA could be elevated based on rivalries with Caitlin Clark or involving Caitlin Clark. And that's true. That's true. Sports are always better when rivalries are involved, especially in basketball. But the media, they want these rivalries with Caitlin Clark to be based on race. The Associated Woke spoke with Victoria Jackson, a clinical professor at Arizona State who claims to be a sports historian. According to Vic Jackson, there are racial reasons as to why Caitlin Clark is so popular. Look at her rivalry with Angel Reese and LSU. It was racial, damn it! Vic Jackson claimed that new fans of women's basketball, they were drawn in by this pretend rivalry between Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese, a racial rivalry. It was black versus white. 
Obviously, that is complete garbage. For starters, and this is no disrespect to Angel Reese, but LSU and Angel Reese, they played a minimal, minimal role in elevating women's college basketball. If you don't believe me, just look at the ratings. Iowa, South Carolina, and the national championship damn near doubled the ratings of Iowa LSU. Kaitlin Clark becoming a cultural phenomenon, it had absolutely nothing to do with her race. Was Michael Phelps a phenomenon because he was white? Or was it because he was the best doggy paddler that you'd ever seen? You know, I never hear this same excuse in the mainstream media when minority athletes become popular in mainstream. Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, Patrick Mahomes, when they become big mainstream stars, it's because of their skill. It's because of their likability. When Caitlin Clark is a big star, it's because she's white. If this racial narrative continues, and especially if WNBA players keep fueling this ass fire, this will be a monumental mistake for the WNBA. You want to know the quickest way to convince people not to watch your substandard product? Make it all about race. The WNBA has an opportunity to do something they haven't done in two decades. They have the chance to have millions of people watching their product. Did you know when the WNBA launched in the late 90s, over 5 million people watched the first game? Second game, 3.6 million viewers. Now, obviously, they never saw those numbers again. WNBA hasn't eclipsed a million viewers in the last 16 years. Now, at the time, during the late 90s, People were curious. They tested the product. They determined that it sucked, it was substandard, and they never watched again. You have the chance now to eclipse your short-lived success of the past. If Caitlin Clark makes the WNBA playoffs, she will easily set record high ratings. All the league and the mainstream media has to do, get out of the way. But they can't do it. They can't do it. They cannot help themselves because they can't stand the fact that a white player is elevating the league. Instead, they seem to be intent on self-destruction. So go ahead. Go ahead. Destroy yourselves. (laughs) Give me your thoughts on this. Aja Wilson claims that corporate America is hesitant to market black women, knowing the entire time she had an endorsement deal with Nike. The WNBA and the media, they seem intent on self-destruction. Instead of embracing Caitlin Clark, they want to create rivalries based on her race. I don't think it's going to work. I don't think it's going to work. I think it's guaranteed to turn people away. Do you agree? Let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share the video. I appreciate your support. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.